Here we go. Welcome once again to another episode of Game Master Dave Plays. I'm here with Game Master Ginger right here. And uh, we've got Anna the Keeper uh, yeah. up there, over there. And uh, Steve, I'm sorry, not Steve, Velvet. Velvet Labouche. Velvet and Labouche. Also Byron Reynolds and Clark Jameson all playing. This is Dr. Our, Reynolds. Our, uh, Dr. Reynolds, I'm sorry. This is our friends Bill and Rich uh, down below us on the stream. Uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, we are playing Call of Cthulhu role playing game. This is uh, maybe session three or four. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> like five? I don't know. Maybe it's session five. Terrible. But I don't session think five we did. of a guaranteed three parter. I, I don't think we. Anything. I, I don't think we recorded all of them, but that's okay. It is what it is. We're having a good time. Let's not die tonight. Let's level up. Well, you don't level up in Call of Cthulhu, but that, that's that's okay too. So we're good. You slowly are eroded to nothing to just the lump. Of <laughs> that's right. Before we went live, we were talking about how um, how insane we might uh, have become so far, how much sanity we have lost. So uh, take it away, Keeper Anna. Um, you just reminded me actually when you said let's level up. It's true that that's not a thing in Call of Cthulhu, but um, what I have not. I've been failing to remind you of is that whenever you do a roll from your skill sheet, you see how there are little check boxes next to it? Oh yeah, that's right. I remember that from the other when time. When you get a successful roll on whatever skill that you rolled, you check that box and mm -hmm. then assuming you survive this encounter um, and get to go home, <laughs> then if you if you so choose, you may actually level up that particular skill. Whichever skill you or skills, because um, you know it's been multiple sessions, you've probably done a number of successful roles by now. Um, so you know if you can remember some of the past ones, I guess we have video evidence of some of them. Yeah. Um, you know this is assuming that you are interested enough in your characters to want to play them again. Right. Um, but in any event, so just try to remember that if you do get a successful skill roll, you can check that box for later. Cool. Um, but aside from that, I already gave the sort of like review of last time. So you're at um, the Princeton student campsite. You tell me what you're doing. It's about one in the afternoon now. I want to check the tent to see if there's any uh, any uh, clues as far as uh, what may have happened here. And what uh, what it, and this is the ornithologist uh, uh, camp, right? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, so if you. If you're relying on the journal that you found, it would seem to be his his camp because it was okay. his journal. Yeah. Okay. I want to check the tent to see if we can find out if he was uh, searching for anything in particular. Um, okay. Um, why don't you give me a spot hidden? And and you said the ship was nearby too, right? The yeah, you can see it. So the shipwreck is. Um, from about a hundred years ago, probably, uh, just based on how worn it is. So it's really just bones now um, of the ship. A lot of it has worn away. And also um, it seems to have been covered uh, partially with sand over time. Okay. So it's partially buried on the beach. Um, but, you know, there's still enough of it sticking out of the sand that you can see like basically the bones of a big, it looks like an old whaler probably. It doesn't look like a uh, uh, greater god, like the spines of a greater god. Uh, give me a Cthulhu Mythos roll. <laughs> oh, look at that. I think I have a one in it. <laughs> you never know. You never I've got zero. So. Oh, no, I've got zero. <laughs> so you have to roll a zero to succeed. I rolled a 51. You have no uh, idea, actually, even what that question means. <laughs> like your your brain asks, I wonder if that's the bones of a greater god, and then you're like, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know. Darn it. Ask Doctor Reynolds those questions, there, Jimmy dear. No, I, my, I passed my I passed my spot hidden row. <laughs> oh, you um, did? Awesome. <laughs> You find in the tent, um, the only thing useful in the tent that you find is a box of bullets for that gun that you found. Oh, good. Um, so there's 25 bullets in that box, but you don't find anything that would be considered like a clue or any, any other clues other than what I've already told you about the state of the campsite. Okay. I think Velvet took the gun, so I'm going to hand, hand the bullets did I, over. Did I take the gun? Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. 
cool. Where I thought, man, might have been, might have been Dr. Reynolds. Maybe I'm wrong. Dr. Reynolds Dr. has a gun. He has one. He has a gun. I right. do have one. And All so right. does the general. I don't know how to use it very well, but I do have one. <laughs> I, yes, I was I was a sergeant, not a general. Uh, sergeant, I don't know where I got general from. Sorry. This, no. this put this poor the gun did not do much good for whoever this poor man is. I yeah, just well, want to put that yeah. there. Do you think Wait, that do you think this ornithologist was the one that was uh, 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 taken to the slab last night? <clears throat> I think uh, he didn't have his gun with him. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do we? I don't think we tried to do a track, or or does somebody have any kind of tracking expertise? Velvet, you do very well at this sort of thing, actually. That's going to say, isn't that your sort of forte? Well, you know, I I, I have some natural world. Um, I don't think I could persuade the ground so much, but um, <laughs> yeah, this would be a track roll if you're trying yeah. if you're trying to figure out where the drag marks are leading. That would be track. I have right, a 20. Do you have a 20? Why don't you do it? Yeah. That's higher than everybody else? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 mine's unimproved. I mean, can I help him? Is that a thing? Or? Okay. So, so, Jimmy's going to look around mean? in the underbrush or whatever there is to see if they can determine if, if this was the person that was dragged off or he was captured. This ornithologist was captured and brought to the, the sacrifice last night. Okay. I'm just gonna look up assisting. I, yeah. So if I assist, if I assist Jimmy, if, if, well, where anybody does, I think we all like, all of us have ten. Yeah. Um, then one would imagine that there would be some sort of buff for that, right? I, yeah, but I need to remind myself. Um, yeah. While the keeper's looking that up, Jimmy says to Velvet, "Hey, uh, uh, if you need any help with like." Uh, learning how to shoot that gun, let me know. Just try not to shoot us. Well, you know, I'm much more familiar with rifles and shotguns, but I feel like uh, <laughs> uh, it's it can't be that different. I mean, it's a, I think it was a, you know, I, I used to shoot a, I used to shoot a rifle on my, on my grandfather's uh, property. So oh, okay. Nice all right, all right. Yeah. So it should be all right. I mean, I, I guess basically just as many people as want to assist make the skill roll, and then if anyone succeeds, All right. then I give you some answer, but then if more than one of you succeed, then, you know, basically, oh, like, right. it stacks all right. the success. So shall we, all, shall we all try to just do a track roll? All and right, then... Jimmy. All right, everyone, let's do it. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> no. Okay, Ginger and I rolled the exact same number. I failed. Oh, really? It wasn't under 20. It wasn't a good number. No. 82. <clears throat> ah, there's a monster behind. Velvet, Velvet, stand still. Just don't move, dear. It's the climax of the scenario. There's Is there a, something behind me? There's something <laughs> behind you. <laughs> it has Velvet. big teeth. Or actually, your... it has no teeth at all, as a matter of fact. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, mighty twenty-seven for me. That's not going to do much. Oh uh, well, it was a wonderful shot, Mike. We tried. Yeah. yeah, you can't tell the um, the track marks uh, or the drag marks. I should say um, are too obscured by right. sand and wind. Um, and, yeah. Should we, I, you know, so we have his journal, I guess. Is it or is it scattered all over the place, or is that? No, you, the journal is a um, a book that you had, and you glanced through the papers mm -hmm. that were scattered. Brown just appear to be research notes or mm. field notes. Okay. Can we maybe read the last journal entry or something like that? And the um, sure. The last entry is um, uh, the night before last, and he basically writes that he had a pretty good day. Uh, the weather was good. He spotted a couple of birds that he'd been tracking, and um, he had a very nice meal. At the sanatorium with the mm. group. Mm. Um, oh, he had been coming and eating there too. Interesting. Yeah, I think Ebenezer had told you that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Blanche yeah. mentioned it. You know, did we ever interview? I don't think we ever interviewed the the patients, except talking to Blanche. Right? We never told them. We never went into their room. Well, we tried, David. We tried some of them. So yeah, I mean, we ignored the patients. <laughs> we, we probably should go back to Alan and talk to him. Yeah, probably. 
if you remember, yeah, I mean, you left him in a pretty bad state. Hmm. He was all bloodied, and and you had administered some some basic first aid. And then we just put him in a room? And we left him in the room where he was absolutely terrified, actually. Now that I think of it, we left him in there. Um, With the Cthulhu gate. Okay. Um, (laughs) Poor We're horrible people. (laughs) We were under some stress. You You guys are Um, doing awesome on the compassion scale. (laughs) I wonder, I wonder if we should check out this uh, 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 light tower, maybe, or, or the the. Or the ship. Someone wanted the to see the, the ship. ship. Oh, yeah, let's check out the close to the ship. This is right here. Okay. Um. So you approach the ship. I mean, there's not much more to see than what I've already described. Um, you saw it from a little bit of ways away uh, from the campsite, but um, as I said, it, it looks like the bones of an old whaler, maybe a hundred years old. Wow. And what was the date on the letter to Ebenezer? Anyone remember? That was 18-something, but not 100 years ago. If anyone has access to Discord, it should still be in that channel, the letter. Yeah, Yeah, because the the letter mentioned something about the... um, The letter dated October 13th, 1896. 1896. From from Ebenezer to William. Yeah, so that's what, 30 years old? Yeah, yeah, so that's not that old. 100 years old. Mm. I can't read that on the screen. I'm going to read my own. Um, So I'm just wondering if if we might see carved somewhere on the wood a symbol similar to what? Yes. Mosty, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, they said they said that the whalers or the ships in the area might have um, symbols on the bow. Yeah, I guess. Okay, a quick confession. That's ginger talking. Mumsy would never consider that worthwhile. So I should probably not have said. Um, <laughs> I think it's fine. I think you should um, uh, allow ginger's instinct to sometimes dominate. Okay. Let's take a look at the bush, <laughs> fellas. Velvet dear, you're very good at noticing things. Who has <laughs> that? Who has the medallion that I think I have Clark that. and Jimmy found? Do you I, have it? I think I still have it. Or, or Clark, do you have it? I don't. You know, who has it? I think you have it. I think I have it. Yeah. Well, let's look and see if we can see anything on this ship that would remind us of it. Sure, I'll do a, a spot hidden to see if I see any kind of a thing like that. You're very even though it's very, very old. Again, uh, I've got a a one, I think. It's a zero, zero, one, right? Wow. That's an actual That's one. That's a one. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh Velvet rocks it. Rock if it there's so anything there, we got it. Anything there, we got it. Anything there, we got it. Knock off that box. Yeah. Um, so you don't see anything on the parts of the boat that are still protruding out of the sand, but remember that a, a fairly significant portion of the boat is buried under the sand. Yeah. So I think um, that we um, that well, and, and the note specifically said they w- it was underneath. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if we should dig a bit and see if uh, there's anything that comes up underneath. That sounds like a plan. So perhaps. Uh, gentlemen, you all can uh, <laughs> go ahead, and I'll I'll just stand back and supervise. Yeah, I dig with my right hand. Remember, my left hand's broken. Mm-hmm. And I'll start you digging this. Well. I had a shovel. shovel and I gave it back. You told me not to bring it. I didn't tell you anything. <laughs> it was big and heavy. Yeah. Wait, the goose got a mm-hmm. shovel last night. The go- oh, that's true. <laughs> Here's the goose. Um, at a rake. At a rake. <laughs> um. If you're digging with your hands, it's going to take a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there any kind of tool around the tent? Or how far away is the lighthouse? I guess we could look. Maybe there's, there's this, Well, there's a tent, right? Mm-hmm. What about one of the tent spikes? Um, oh. Yeah. Let's use that. We got. We should have about f- at least four of them. We could shoot yeah. the yeah. sand yeah. loose in there. I don't know if that's a good for a makeshift. Jim, careful. Uh, thing. Use that to dig. It's gonna dull the blade, so it'll do less damage. Okay. Let's stick with the tent. Let's think. stick with the tent spikes. I think that would be a. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
I mean, it's certainly not as efficient as a shovel. Um, it's going to take you. It's going to take you about an hour, I would say, to uncover the. Uh, and where exactly are you digging? I think some of you have memories of another scenario I ran where you failed to dig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no, and, I don't remember that. Yes, that was a uh, one shot. Oh, I think well, that was the one night. where you were tired because it was the night before you had to get up at four in the morning. So. Oh, then... it was like the night before election day. Right. There you go. Right. We did a one shot, which we did much better than we're doing here. For some <laughs> yeah, well, we kept rolling, rolling for the skies, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh boy. Um. All right, so I guess we're digging for a while. Okay. Um. Why don't you all? Who's digging? Clark is digging. Clark. All right. Yeah, um, we'll so the three of you, please each do a luck roll. Oh. A luck roll. Can I help them dig? I mean, I know I'm older, but I'm tough. Oh, you can, you're not. Whoa! I got a zero one two. Zero yeah. one as well. <laughs> not Mom, zero, she one, doesn't two. bother. <laughs> All right. Um so it takes about an hour. Um but you manage to um clear a section of the buried part of the boat, and as luck would have it. Um, you, As luck would have it, no yeah. pun intended. <laughs> you uh, happen to have selected the, the part of the boat where you do, in fact, uncover some unusual symbols. Oh. Um, and it's basically like a, a stone circle carved with the same symbol that's on the um, necklace that you got from Ebenezer's mm. um, body. But larger, because um, it's on the. In, it's essentially it's um, yeah. it's not carved in, but you know, like basically, like the wood has been cut out to make space for this um, inlay. I guess inlay, yeah. Wow. Well, it certainly did not do much good. Did not bring much luck to this ship, not did it? Ship. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, well, nor, nor for your Ebenezer, I guess. And the other thing that, um, if anyone has any naval knowledge or knowledge of boats. I don't know if anyone, um, but um, basically the the disc that you found was attached to the keel below the waterline. Oh, for like luck or whatever or protection. That means whatever it can only be seen when it's underwater. <laughs> so something underwater is seeing the symbol. That's the way I interpret that. Well, yeah. you are very smart, Dr. Reynolds, and it is your area of expertise. Well, so that's interesting that the boat the boat had this symbol under the waterline, and I think if I'm not mistaken, Ebenezer's thing was a mentioned that uh, it was a shell, right? So I mean, these are both kind of water oriented or water themed uh, symbol, whatever that means. And then the the murder that took place last night happened right near the water on the cliff, right? Um, I'm beginning to. Feel like maybe we should back away from the beach. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Probably not a bad idea. Um, so, what are you going to do with this disc? Uh, can we pry it off? Well, do you want to see if it fits in the slot? It, is it the same size? That, would it fit in there? I don't understand. What slot? I mean, the the. the Again, this is Ginger because Mumsy would would be considering this a brain break from the horror. <clears throat> I'm wondering if the medallion that Velvet has would fit in where the inlay is. Oh, uh, well, so I think Clark has the, the medallion is like oh I don't know like the size of a quarter maybe. Oh, okay. Um, the disc that you have found is much bigger. Got it. And it's inlaid into the wood. So it's theoretically pryable. Ooh. Yeah. As if, you want to take it out? Yeah, let's pry it off. Maybe we could see. Byron, would it be useful for future research to have this for your occult? Research? Yeah, I would. Like yeah, that, sure, it's about, absolutely. It's probably about this size. Okay. So it's heavy, but it's not like unwieldy. 
And it's, yeah, made, and it's made of wood? No, I'm sorry. It's I, I think I said stone, but I actually stone. meant lead. Lead. Hmm. So it actually is a little heavy then. It's heavy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's not, it's not like... It's not huge, but it's heavy, so... You're not. What I mean is you're not going to need multiple people to carry it around. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you just going to try and pry it with your hands or what? Uh, let's try and take it. Well, we have we have the tent spikes. Let's try and wiggle it out with the yeah, pin tent spikes. Yeah. In, the um, in the meantime, the ornithologist's tent has now fallen down. Yeah, well. <laughs> he might not be needing that anymore. So. Yeah, right. Oh. Um, so whoever is prying, give me a strength roll. I'm not. Uh, you only have one hand, so I, I got one hand. <laughs> I, I mean, I get, I get strength is forty. All right, go ahead. Zero nine. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumsy gave it a shot, and she rolled a nine. Excellent! Oh, wow. You probably Older have a higher strength than nine. Uh, mine was an eighty-two. Oh yeah, so my strength is forty. So the uh -huh. high number is twenty, the bottom number is eight. So it's not extreme, so, but it's. You did a hard success. A hard success. Yeah, okay. I'm a swimmer. Mumsy swims, so her mm. arms are tough. Uh, Mumsy yep. successfully pries the um, uh, medallion out. The wood is pretty rotted. I mean, it's old, mm. and it's been the part under the sand has been a little bit protected from the salt air and the elements, but it's still quite old. So, um, mm. yeah, she can fairly easily take it out unharmed. So, well, well, well done. Thank you, Velvet. Mm. Mm. One of you gentlemen can carry it. Great. <laughs> Do we have a bag or anything? Do any of us have a, a sack? Probably it's not. It's in your inventory. In the ornithologist tent, there's probably something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then probably maybe we can borrow a bag for it. Yeah, it's probably right. Has a backpack. Um, someone, someone who's lucky, roll a luck roll. Not her. <laughs> I just go. Ho, ho. I rolled thirty, and my luck is seventy-five. So I go in and I easily find the backpack. Yep, the there's way. a backpack. Yep. Well done. This is awesome. I love how oh, that's funny. Ginger started telling the keeper what the roles mean. That's what I was just saying. <laughs> I just said Ginger's Miss Bossy man. I'm sorry. I usually <laughs> I I'm laughing because someone. Into existence. I rolled yeah. a 30, so I easily walk into the tent and find. I want to find a bazooka. <laughs> 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 sorry, Anna. <laughs> I definitely don't want to tick <laughs> off the keeper. I was going to give you a backpack on a <gasps> successful luck roll because that is the kind of thing that an ornithologist <laughs> who is camping Anything probably would have. Would have. Yeah. So, yeah. I wasn't going to make that very hard because it was a good idea. So, anyway, you have a backpack. You have this heavy lead disc in the backpack. What are you going to do? Do we... Should we check out the uh, lighthouse while we're here, or should we head back? We are here. Well, so, Doc Byron, yeah. Clark, was there something you guys wanted to look look look? Uh, at? You have an idea of where we go next? It's about two thirty in the afternoon now. We should check out the lighthouse. We should definitely uh, make our way back to the mansion. Mm -hmm. And I want to inspect that room that Alan's in one more time as well. Before where, dark. Where the uh, the thing on the wall is. Right. Yeah. I wonder if there's a place where you can put the medallion inside the, or the or the the medallion or the thing we just got off the boat. Do you want to see if really it matches point. the design does, on the Does wall? anything look like they would fit together? Um, not really. No. No. So go to look. How far is the lighthouse? It's it's, it's relatively it's. I mean. Everything on the island is relatively close. It's only about a half a mile across from east to west. Yeah, yeah. So let's, if, if everybody's okay, I, I say we uh, take Clark's idea and go to the lighthouse. The lighthouse is on the northwestern corner of the island. So, you know, you're about in the center of it, of the northern part. So it's only about a quarter mile away. Okay. Um, I mean, they're basically, there's, I say corner, the island is not perfectly rectangular, nor is it perfectly oval. It's got little bits and pieces sticking out. And so the, the lighthouse is on a, basically a, a jut of rock formation that comes out, um, which, you know, is, is handy for a lighthouse because it then sets it somewhat away from the, the rest of the island. So um, 
yeah, you approach the lighthouse. Um, looks kind of old and run down. It is not lit. Um, I don't know how else to describe a lighthouse. There's got to be a do door there to enter. A door. I guess a door, right. Mm -hmm. Can we take a look around um, and see if there's anything obvious on the ground outside or any sort of um, blood or other things? Oh, like That velvet is smart. There's a murderer hiding, and this is a good yeah. murderer hiding hole. Sure, I'll do a spot. Is there like leftover chicken bones from a Kentucky Fried Chicken run? 75, That's which funny. is not going to do it. I don't, I don't see anything unusual, do you? <laughs> I don't see anything strange. I don't even see the door. <laughs> <laughs> Clark? What, what, I want to go up the stairs and the, if there's a staircase to see if it open. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, um, the so the, the door itself um, into the lighthouse opens easily. Uh, there's not too much really of note inside on the ground floor except a staircase leading up to a trap door. Okay. Yeah, I'll make my way up the stairs. Okay. You're going to try to open the trap door? Yeah. You cannot. Mm. Okay. But meaning it's like, mm. is it like a rope or something? Or has, um, a it is, you can't, I mean, you can't really tell um, from this side, but it appears, I mean, it's the kind of trapdoor that you would have to lift. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. You cannot lift it. Can I hit tab so I can see what the missions are in this uh, scenario? The mission is <laughs> get off this island alive and preferably with your sanity intact. Oh, Bonus points if your friends also survive. <laughs> we want to rescue the patients, dear Jimmy. So the door won't yeah. open. Uh, Mum, Mumsy, how good is your swimming again? Um, I'm a bit, I am the only well, one who's gonna survive. Yeah, yeah I'm not, I can't make it to land. Yeah. I don't think it's well, it's well over average. Let's say if the average person swum at, say, a skill level of, say, 20, Mumsy <laughs> would be at about a skill level of 50. Oh, that's some sort of... Oh. Yeah, so I do pretty well, because so, I am in my mid to late 60s, so yeah, but... Okay. Strong so, mind, strong body, Velvet. Indeed. Oh, that's what... That's I'm what... That's what I mean, that, indeed. Um, well done. So, huh. Uh, can we knock on the door? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a plan. Who's up on the ladder? Right now, Clark is up on... It's Clark's up there. Stairs. It's not okay. a ladder. Like, yeah. Clark, why don't you knock on the door and see if anyone answers? All right, so I'm not going to go on the trap door. Give me a listen roll, Clark. This giant whale consumes Clark. Right. <laughs> 52. 52, I'm, I'm betting, is going to be a fail. Yeah, it's a fail. Okay. Um, you don't hear anything. I mean, you hear the knock. But you don't hear anything unusual. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know. I'm stuck. Would this be? Would there be something on top of the trap door preventing us? Right. Because it feels it? heavy, or is it because it feels locked? Or we, what, what, why isn't it opening? Um, Are you supposed to pull instead of push? Like, like what is it? <laughs> well, um, if a if a trap door like this was locked, you would have expected there to be like the contraption so where you have like the little right hook yes. and the thing goes over it right. yeah. bad luck and so you might expect to hear that rattling on the other side like you might expect to be able to move right. it a little bit but right. to hear the lock yeah that's not it's what's not, happening what's happening not, is he cannot like it does not budge so it's more like something heavy is on top of it mm -hmm. Hmm. now if somebody is Trying to start yelling walk. like we're here to help or something like that, Clark. If Maybe someone, someone will respond if they know there's human beings on the other side, not a monster. Mm -hmm. Who knows what this person might have seen if there's somebody locked up there? Right, like somebody locked themselves. Like, Maybe if they there. hear like a, if they hear a human voice like saying we're here to help or something like that, like that yeah. might they might open the door. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to say, is any here? Uh, we're not going to do you any harm. We're not here to do you any harm. Give me another listen, Ron. 
I assume after you call, you listen again, right? Can we all, can we all of course. Uh, yeah, but you're not up at the top of the stairs, only Clark. Is. <laughs> I mean, you can try oh, to wow. listen, and maybe I'll give you something on an extreme success. I don't know. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll see I, what you do about it. I roll the one. <gasps> oh, well, that's good. It's the night of the ones. Yeah, that's almost three in a row, I think, right? Yeah, they're usually followed by the NATO, night of the zero, double zero. <laughs> <laughs> triple zero. Double zero is good. It's no, the night triple zero. Oh, is double zero a 100? Tri tri triple zero roll? is a 100. Yeah, you don't roll zeros. Oh, uh, right, okay. So it's actually impossible to make a mythos roll if you have zero skill. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, what do you hear? Um, <laughs> I roll that good. I gotta give you something. Um, the you hear what sounds you hear what sounds like burbling, burgling, burbling, like, um, burbling, like, um, somebody's like cooking. Cooking no, up. how to best describe this? Um, is it like an a, organic sound keeper or an inorganic burbling? It would it would sound like an organic sound, like if you had a very viscous fluid, fluid that was shifting around, like it might glug or burble. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you come down, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Viscous fluids. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I just hear something strange, but maybe you should just like not good idea. Just, just come down quietly now. Yeah, I'm gonna make my way down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, can I send my mage hand around the? Oh wait. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, God, I'm I'm ready to burn this thing to the ground. Um, what what material does the lighthouse look like? It's brick or wood? Wood. It's wood. Mm -hmm. Huh. A wooden lighthouse. Hmm. I don't know what would make a sound like that unless there was a leak in the uh, roof, but even um, so. Um, Could you threaten it? Could you say, Clark, you have a gun. Take it off the trap door because I'm going to start shooting through the wood. Mumsy's beginning to like get aggravated. Hmm. I, I yeah, don't Clark, know how to put that, that idea there. outside. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I vote no. <laughs> no. Oh wow! Well, if Jimmy says no, then it's definitely not. Okay, with his one hand, he votes no. Damn. <laughs> what um, what what um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Did, were we? Forgive me. I I know that we were talking with Leonard, yeah. and Leonard uh, described something that passed by his room. I. Um, <laughs> Yes. How did he describe that again? I don't think I don't think any of us observed that. Nobody said something about bubbles or something like that, right? Bubbles. Oh, velvet. It's about yes. Bubbles. It looked like bubbles. Were they burbling bubbles? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I think this is where this thing's hiding. <laughs> yeah. Let's burn the lighthouse down. I, 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 I'm thinking. I think we gotta burn the lighthouse down. <laughs> you know, actually, that's not a bad idea. Wait, 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 I have the floor. Well, well, the Coast Guard might see. see it. From, they'll see oh, it yeah. from the other side and send help. I That's have, a great uh, idea, Byron. Right? Yeah. Is, yeah. Chlor is chloroform flammable? We need to look that up on Wikipedia. Probably. I'm, I've got the chloroform. We well, we have, isn't there a generator? Don't we have gasoline? Yeah, there's lots of gasoline. I mean, that's back at the house. Yeah, but we can go. We, we'd want to do it. We'll do it at night. So you guys go and do I that I am not night, coming back here at I'll night, I'll lock though. myself up again. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to come back here at night. That's like now, a, now, we just The thing is, though, that's when people are going to see it, though. Well, you're not, you're not going to see this dark, thing easily though, burning during the light. day. You want it at night. Hmm. I don't know. Could we? Hmm. Let's light everything on fire. I yeah. think it's a good idea. I think we light the thing on fire at night. The old ship. The ornithologist tent. The ornithologist tent. He probably has matches in there, right? Maybe a little campfire starter or something, so whatever. We, I said we dust, dust the wooden thing with gasoline and light on I'm fire. I'm sure he has a campfire starter or something. I wonder, yeah, maybe we could just get the tent and light the tent on fire in there and just see what happens. Oh, inside the bottom floor of the light house? Byron, do you, are you, do you think you the want... If it's wood and, and it's old, it's going to go off. Yeah. I have no problem with that. 
<laughs> you, but, but, but Byron, you were saying come back at night. What do you yeah, think? Well, I think it's got, otherwise they're not going to see it from the other side during the day. Uh, but at night, you, you might see it. As like a signal fire? Though? Yeah, why not? Right? Should we sure. wait until dusk, dusk then? Well, I would, I would wait until, to... like, just, yeah, let's not wait until it's too late, right? But mm-hmm. you want people to be awake. So, like, just as it's starting to get, just as it's starting to get dark. It'll burn for a little while. So what time, time of year is it? They'll think, they'll think the house is on fire or something, and people they'll send somebody oh. to help. Mm-hmm. Maybe. That's a good idea. No, 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 that's my idea. That's a good, that's a good idea. So, in the meantime, should we go back to the house? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's get this stuff together. Yeah, uh, I wonder if we could try to find a cart or something too to make it a little easier to drag all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, we can ask uh, <laughs> what's her name at the house. The letter isn't dated. The letter now, in volume. That burbling sound, though, cart. <clears throat> you, did it sound like something like alive doing that burbling? Or liquidy. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I couldn't tell if it was animate or not. So maybe it's just, just maybe really it's just strange. has a hole in the roof and it's full of water. There may not even be anything dire. Mm. Well, we know. Well, we know there were two people missing, right? The ornithologist and Charles. Mm-hmm. One of them's dead, and there's burbling upstairs. I tell you, I am good at killing this murderer. If we want to somehow, if like, can we? Is there anything we could do to to smoke him out or or shoot up through the floorboards with a gun and then come back and burn the place later? We could try. I mean, we could throw a rock in the window, one of the windows, or something. Maybe I don't. Really, I don't really know. Well, I'm picturing. Well, there's, def- well, there's definitely a window up there, right? Because it's a lighthouse, so there's got to be well, a, a, a window. The lighthouse out. window is is far too high for you to be able to right. reach. You couldn't rock. see it. Okay. But we could yell up to it. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering. We can give, it, we can give somebody a chance to leave before we light the thing on fire. Mm. How, roughly how tall is the lighthouse? I mean, is it as tall as our house? Our house? Lighthouse. So it's got to be fairly be tall. At least three stories high. Okay. Because right. you have to be able to see it. Okay. Okay. It's got to be able to see it. Probably higher than that, really. Yes. Okay. So you guys aren't in favor of shooting whatever's up there through the floor? No, I said we burn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like I feel no like fire, burning it. We can get a little distance. <laughs> we can set a fire and then get some distance and then see what happens. Whereas if we're shooting it, we're kind of committed. Mm. If it decides to fight with us, you know. Like, that's true. Except it, except Charles could get out while we're away. Uh, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. What do you mean, Charles can get out? Well, if we're assuming that the mur- that Charles, the isn't the it, wasn't that his name, the the yes. yeah, the, the uh, orderly. He's supposedly oh, very, very big man. So if he mm-hmm. he could easily be moving stuff around or even sitting on top of that top door to keep it closed. That's right? true. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, Clark, you are one strong man, but doing this is a lot yeah. harder than. Yeah, I couldn't budge it at all. Yeah. Well, if we set this thing on fire and Charles is up there, at least we, we may be able to smoke him out. I, I hopefully, maybe we'll be able to save him. I'm not sure. Mm. All right. Good. Nopsy doesn't care about saving him. If he's the murderer, he can go down. <laughs> well, I think that's a fine. That's a fine plan. Maybe we'll uh, uh, see if anything is different at the house, and then come back at, at dusk. The plan. All right. I hope we're discussing this where he can hear us. Yeah, right. Byron, are you are you okay with that? We'll head back to the house and come back at dusk. All right. Okay. So okay. by the time you get back to the house, it's um. Hey, Steve, do you mind bringing that bottle of red wine from the bar? <laughs> um. Uh-oh. The keeper's asking for wine. Uh, I need go. to be saucy for uh, yeah, an extra little <laughs> room. Yeah. Right. Um, the creature will roll with uh, disadvantage if the keeper has glass of wine. Yeah, we like that. That's fine. So instead of the cook, um, cookie roll, it's it's the it's the wine roll. <laughs> so yeah, we started this um, 
this session at around 1 p.m. and then you spent some time at the campsite and at the boat and then um, you were probably at the lighthouse by about I would say maybe three-ish. You spent about half an hour, so it's about 4.30 when you get back to the house. Wow. Okay. Uh, and I assume at some point you ate the sandwiches that Blanche gave you. Yeah. By the way, is, is there a map on the wall somewhere of the island, anywhere where we could get a visual of it? Um... Are you are you looking around in the house for that? I mean, you haven't seen anything like that. Well, we've been all around the house. Okay, darn. Because again, this is probably Ginger and not Mumsy, but I'm wondering if the shape of the island has anything in common with the Ooh, symbol. The, that's a great idea. But the, we definitely need to look at Alan's room. He may have somehow mm -hmm. seen that letter or something. Now, was there a sledgehammer um, by the, the tool shed? Yes. Wasn't there? Isn't that how you attempted to? I mean, yeah, I, I tried to fix the generator. <laughs> yeah, I would say that in the um, <laughs> tool shed, you could find just about any tool, um, you know, anything that Ebenezer would have used for any sort of maintenance jobs. And it is New England, and so a sledgehammer would be useful for like breaking ice in the winter and stuff like that. All right, so I want to grab the sledgehammer before we go into the house. Okay. Because I'm thinking that we should, uh, we should talk to Alan and see if we can get any information from him. Are you going to threaten him with the sledgehammer, no, no, Clark? No, no um, we're going to go back to that room. And why I don't fully believe in this occult stuff, I, I'm proposing that we destroy that uh, mural on the wall of that, that gate. Yeah. What do you think, Byron? This is your wait, area. Wait, 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 what, what? No. You want to, you want to, you want to destroy the symbol? Yeah, the the mural, the mural in Alan's room, because obviously I mean, Byron, it's disturbed him somehow. So I'm pretty sure Byron that you succeeded your occult role when you were looking yeah, at it. We so did. You would know that it's already um, destroyed whatever Alan did to it with his fingers that are, have left it. Right. So it's so. Yeah. So there's no reason I think to destroy it. Okay. I'm wondering if. So no, no. that was used to that was used to summon whatever it was. You generally don't summon something unless you have a way to control that something. There was nothing else in that room. You want to go back? Yeah, I think we should go back and take a second look at that room since we've got some time. I like so Clark's there, right? idea. As far as you know. Um, so you're going to head, are you going to head back into the laundry, the back door? Um, through the laundry and, and down the I stairs? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, so his room is towards the front of the house, and you're coming in from the back of the house, so you mm -hmm. do walk past um, Darlene's room. Yes. Um, and she kind of taps on the window. Okay. Sort of gesturing at you, like, sort of with a, a face, like, what what the heck is going on, you know? Um, right. Uh you know, tell me if you want to stop or if you want to keep going. Um, you want to talk to her? Who had luck with Darlene? Anybody? Oh, uh, yeah, Mumsy? All right, Mumsy's getting tired of all these patients. <laughs> Hello, Darlene, dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that it's been a rough day, hasn't it, dear? I No one came to let me out, and um, Glenn brought me breakfast, and that's it. And uh, it looks like it's already late afternoon. And I, I could have been in the library all this time. Maybe, maybe, maybe Blanche could bring her some books. Oh yes. Um, just for a brief time, for safety reasons, everyone's going to stay in their room, Darlene. But I think would she'd you be like happy us to, to bring read. you some special books from the library? We could certainly do that. Um, so Darlene marches away from the door and pulls something out of her dresser. It's a paper. She scribbles on it, mm -hmm. and then basically comes up. And puts her hand with the paper up against the window. You can see it's a list of books. All right. Okay. Want me to slip this under the door? That would be great, darling. Thank you very much. And I'm sure Blanche will have something for us for dinner because we all must be very hungry. Mumsy the librarian. Um, as you so, give, so give Jimmy the list. And Jimmy, you go run back by yourself and go get this book. <laughs> I can't carry these big books. I got a broken hand. 
<laughs> I don't think that's the point. Who, who has the highest library use skill? Oh my gosh, there's a library skill? use there skill? There is, actually. Uh, I think I, I have a library skill, but Ooh, I guess I do. Yeah. I, have a, I have a 30. What do you have, Clark? 30. Have 60. Oh. oh. Clark can take the list and go yeah, through How about oh, you. He not split the party? Byron. <laughs> if you you're moving on, then you're coming to the uh, part of the hall where um, Hawkins' room and, and Harding's room face each other. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and you can hear, basically, you can hear screaming coming from Hawkins' room, Leonard's room. Oh. Uh, you can't hear, because of all the screaming, you can't hear much of anything coming out of um, Alan's room. Like First. screaming in pain or screaming in anger? Um, I mean, um, probably, well, I mean, maybe give me a psychology role. Okay. Listen, you guys. Um, I rolled 79 and I have a skill of 80. So I do we'll put 60. you in time out if you don't be quiet. Yeah, this um, scream sounds pretty familiar to you of uh, someone who is angry and is a little bit unhinged. Mm. All right, I, we don't have time for this. Let's do. Let's <laughs> go into Alan. <laughs> okay. Um, Alan is still curled in a fetal position where you left him. So, sorry, um, dude. Last night, and uh, yeah, he doesn't move when you come into the room. Uh oh. Uh oh. He doesn't what? He, no. He doesn't move. Can one of the doctors check if he's alive? Uh, he is very feverish. I want to show him the medallion I have that I got off the dead uh, guy at the at the dock. Okay. Um, so you're just gonna what, hold it in front of his face? Are you gonna say something to him? What are you What are you doing? Hey, do you know what this is, man? Okay. Um, he is kind of shivering and again very feverish. So he his eyes seem glassy. He seems oh. like he's under, uh, you know, a, a big fever. But he does kind of look at the the medallion, and um, at first there's no reaction. But then you can kind of see him start a little bit, uh, and he kind of moans uh, incoherently, and then he sort of goes back into his feverish. Um, you need to get him a blanket, I think, right? Yeah, poor man. Maybe we need to get him out of this horrible room. Um, but I mean, also his wounds were pretty severe. So yeah. you um, yeah. first aided them, you patched yeah. them up, but you you didn't. They're now like puffy and a little bit pussy. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I'm sure there's first aid stuff, but Byron, what do you think? Can we leave him here for a little while? Because we, we we let's just check on Blanche and. Uh, and the other two patients upstairs, maybe? I mean, there is a murderer on the list. <laughs> we should probably just count heads. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there's, I might. There's four patients upstairs. Yeah. Uh, I think we should probably, yeah, move, leave them here for now. I mean. Well, let's just, uh, make, yeah, maybe Dr. clear. Dr. Reynolds, uh, do you think um, we should, we need to take care of this patient immediately or should we take a look at him? Yeah, what, like, what, give me, give me, you know, he seems like he's getting pretty sick. Do, do, do you think uh, he needs yeah, to... I mean, the, the information I gave you about his state was without requiring a medicine role. Like any mm -hmm. layperson can see that he's shivering and feels hot to the touch and that his wounds are angry and mm -hmm. swollen. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think we should leave him in this room? Maybe we should bring. Was him there any room. were there any antibiotics or anything in the uh, in the the? Um... Uh, this is before oh, antibiotics. They weren't really around until the forties, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Good point. That's right. Um, but well, there's got to have been a, an infirmary, but I don't know. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. I mean, the, the medicine cabinet that you discovered off of his office had psycho psy, psychiatry drugs. I'm not sure what the word I was searching for there, mm. but it also had like general well, penicillin was 1928. Yeah, no. Um, uh, it might. It probably had something like you know alcohol that you could pour into the Maybe uh, something like so aspirin like for the or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Clark, what was the idea you just had? You just you said something. Oh uh, well, the, the, maybe we should bring the patient upstairs where, where we'd be able to be able to better care for him. 
Uh, or certainly this room must is a horrible place for him. Mm -hmm. put yeah, him I mean, I wonder if even just getting him away from these or yeah, this horrible place. Yeah, put him in his room, put him put, put him in the bed. Put him in his bed. This I think this is, is his room. This is his room. Oh. This is his room. Oh. I'll be right back. I gotta grab some drink. Put him in one of the guest rooms. Okay, let's yeah, send did, yeah. did I just hear Byron volunteer to go to the library to get the books for darling? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hmm. There's one empty room in the upper patient wing, just FYI, although right now it has the body of a maid in it. I know, right? So, mm. let's take you out of this room with this horrible, remember. horrific thing on the wall. <laughs> it's, a, you with it. it's a gate to the nether world. I let you stay in the room with a dead body. Well, upstairs, I'm trying to remember. Boys, who is upstairs? We have Carl or Randolph, right? Now that we have the Colonel. Mm -hmm. We have that angry man. I forget his name. Um, That's downstairs, I think. Leonard. Yeah, he's downstairs. Leonard is downstairs. No. Um, Leonard doesn't have a monopoly on being an angry man. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's right. The gentleman who snapped at us when we passed by his room. <laughs> oh, my God. What was his name? <clears throat> Henry Adam Barber III, I think it's here. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Okay. I shouldn't be giving you the hints, but, Goodness, but uh, you do have the files. Down. Well, you have the files. And also, it's been a while since we played. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Henry Adam Barber the Third, Blanche, right. Colonel Billings, and Mrs. Carla Randall. That's so, right. I forgot. Well, Byron about has the uh, Byron has the lead symbol uh, that we found on the front of the ship, right behind him. I do. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, we could always move poor Mabel's body if necessary, right? To make a space for. I can't. I got a broken hand. Ugh. Yeah, you did pretty well digging, though. <laughs> Do you know uh, Melba, but yes. Melba. Um, Sorry. So <laughs> I I agree with Clark's idea. Let's get this guy out of this room. All right. Bring him upstairs. Maybe we can give him one of the guest rooms. Yeah, give him one of the guest rooms. <gasps> hmm. <laughs> right? The ones they're, they're all made up. I mean, they're apparently we were supposed to stay in there last night anyway, so. Well, we can't lock him then. We got to put him in the bed. I mean, put a blanket over this guy. Let him sleep. Yeah, yeah we have to carry him, though. Right? Yeah, you'd have to carry him. He's in no state to walk. I can't. Um, I got a broken hand. <laughs> yeah. Probably gonna take at least two of you. To Clark, do it. maybe you and I can do I it. Help carry him. Uh, all right, Clark, why don't you and I help carry him up the stairs? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it is. All right, so we'll do that. Do you know this Velvet and Clark have been spending some have been cooperating? Boy, um, I guess both of you give me a strength roll. Mumsy oh, just gave me nice little. Six. Mumsy just uh, 27. I succeeded. And I rolled a 96. <gasps> Wait. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, I have his head. You dropped his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're carrying him up two flights of stairs. Uh, so that's a sort of an unfortunate. Uh, What's the wrong, Clark? It's an unfortunate failure. What's the wrong, Clark? You know you, you, know you want to. What's the roll? Oh dear. I don't want to kill this guy. <laughs> oh, we killed enough people. <laughs> I want to push uh, the roll. You... Okay. What are you doing differently or better to allow you to push the roll? Oh, um, well, oh. I only had the bottom of his uh hold tighter. Yeah, I only had the bottom of his leg, so I'm just uh going to hold him above the knees so I can have a better grip on him. All right. Like Jimmy has noticed that Velvet and Clark oh, oh. Jimmy has noticed that Velvet and Clark seem to be spending more time together than Jimmy and Velvet. <laughs> oh, Bill got a good roll. Uh, Rich, what was your roll for? For strength? I didn't know I was helping. Am I? Oh, I, I thought Clark I and Velvet were doing it. I can't. No, I, I walked out to get a drink. That's why. Uh, oh. Hold on. Then I, I will happily roll. Well, it looked like Bill succeeded on his mm -hmm. push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
So you get him up. You did it. Better grip. Better grip. That's not without yeah. grunt constraints, but mm. I mean, there's basically there's three guest rooms, or there's um, on the north side of the house, or there's some other rooms on the south side of the house. Where are you taking him exactly? I say guest room because the only other empty patient room has a dead body. Yeah. yeah. And so the um. Yeah, but there, there, there were the guest they, rooms, and then there were the staff rooms. The nurse. I'm sorry, the uh, maid was supposed to have make up, up the uh, guest rooms for yes. us, and none of, us, none of us slept in there last night, so... Yeah, guest right. room. Just take them to one of the one, guest One of the guest rooms, oh. yeah. And get them under the covers. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. From the inside. Uh, what now? Uh, should we give them something to drink? I mean, I don't know. Doctors, what do you think? Chicken soup? If the doctor <laughs> want to attend to him more thoroughly they were in a rush last night when you discovered him so yeah, they only took kind of the barely, bare bones barely bandaged like stabilized him basically yeah. uh, you know from an RP perspective I, I won't make you like tell me exactly what you're doing but if you want to roll medicine and spend some time with him then we can just say that you like how, much, to how much time do we have left keeper what time is, time is it uh, well, you got back about 4.30. It's probably at least 5 by now with all that. We want, and it takes us how long to walk to the lighthouse? About an hour. You you could cut that down if you hustled, but you're going to be carrying no, heavy no, 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 no. So let's say if we spend two, we could probably spend about an hour or two doing this, and then we'd have to go. Well, what time does the sunset? What time is yeah, the Yeah, I, I was unable to determine <laughs> probably around uh, what seven or eight. time of year this is, because that does make a big difference. Let's say it's spring or fall, just yeah. to make it like average. Yeah. 7.30 or 8. Sunset. Um, probably more like 7. I mean, seven you know, in the winter in New England, it gets dark at 4. Yeah, let's say 7. Seven's yeah. probably a good call. Yeah. Um, Mumps, you roll 31 with a 51 medicine, 51 medicine check, so I so she succeeded. Check that box. All right. So let's say that um, if you spend, what time did I just say it was? 4.30. 4 and I rolled 100. <laughs> oh, God. Stay away from him. So I, I'm, I don't even know which. I'm looking at his head and I'm inspecting his feet. Yeah. You broke um, his toe. That would be like a, that would be a critical fumble, except yeah. for the fact that Mumsy already announced herself. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to say that Mumsy, like, sees you about to do something fail and, like, just pushes you yeah. out of the way. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, <laughs> so let's say you spent some time trying to disinfect his wounds. You sewed up what you could. You found a needle and thread in the uh, medicine cabinet. Um, and you sort of did what you could, gave him, I'm right. assuming, right. such a thing as aspirin. I don't know if there was or not, but yeah, aspirin you know, was right. something to bring the fever down. So all this probably takes you about 45 minutes. Um, so it's a little after five now. Okay. Gentlemen, we should probably don't velvet, oh, velvet's, velvet's in the restaurant, but shouldn't we check on Blanche before we go? We've been gone a long time. She, she must be worried. Yeah, yes, yeah, so let's I'm sure she's gonna to want to tend to the patients at some point. Yes. If we are treating her as an ally, I think we need to be consistent in that. What do you yeah, think, okay, Dr. Venom? Yeah. All right, so I guess we're trying to find right. gonna find Blanche. Uh well, I'm assuming you're looking for her in her room since yeah. you locked everybody in, right? Yes. I can't remember actually. Did you give her the key? I feel yes. like you I, Yeah, yeah, we did. In case it was okay. a fire or something. Um, in that case, since she had a key, let me think. Well, five o'clock. No, she's she's in the room. So you you come to the room, um, and you basically can see her in there. I think you had um her in her room with the colonel, and so she right. brought some supplies for him. Uh, so the scene that you come across when you come to her room is that um, basically he's sitting up in his um, wheelchair and she is reading to him from a book nice. um, and they seem you know fairly content when the door opens she does look up and was like oh my goodness where have you been it's been hours yeah did you did you find the did you find the student um what is going on let me remember his name 
Uh, Mr. Did you find Mr. Shelley? No, we didn't. We didn't. Oh. And we didn't find Charles either. Oh, okay. But uh, we found the lighthouse. We did. Okay. Is there any? And Blanche, thank you so much for your patience. It was so comforting to know that you were here in case any in case anyone any. Didn't happen. Did you notice anything or hear anything while we were away? I mean, you've been away so long that Mrs. Randolph is crying again because she needs her man. Right. Oh. And, uh, you know, Mr. Grumpy across the way, uh, you know, Henry the Third or whatever, he's been complaining that he uh, needs his lunch. I did let myself out to go um, make lunch for everybody except I didn't go downstairs because Leonard was screaming so much. So Darlene and Alan and Leonard are going to be hungry. But I, yeah. I fed, I fed the, the patients up here. You know, we're the paying patients anyway. So. Thank you, Blanche. That, I mean, obviously, Dr. Brewer had faith in you for a good reason. So. Um, so anyway, um, I guess if you're back, I'm going to go make dinner and you might want to see the Mrs. Randolph. Yeah. Can we do that quickly, Dr. Reynolds? While we were upstairs, did you grab any medicine as we walked by? Or, oh, Blanche, I'm sorry. Before you go, May, I just would like to let you. I'd, Mumsy tells her, gives her a quick update on Alan. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know much about him. He's been a strange fellow ever since he came, and he um, doesn't talk much. and. When he does talk, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess I'm sorry to hear he's in such bad shape. I didn't want you to be startled, and I wanted you, you know, that now we all know where he is. There was no way so to... Where, did, we lock, did we lock him in there, or did, or did we there leave was, it? I don't think there was a lock. Was there a lock on the guest room? That was one of Mumsy's concerns, right? Um, well, I guess we'll find out. There you go. So Blanche heads off to the the direction of the kitchen, and the colonel is just kind of sitting there drooling on himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything to you. I request succotash. If you got succotash, I'd like that. Okay. Succotash? What is succotash? <laughs> For dinner! Suzanne likes to turn <laughs> Colonel suddenly sits bolt upright in his chair and screams, Death to the rebels! And then slumps back down again. <laughs> who said who does that? The colonel. The colonel, because he was in the Civil War. He heard you say succotash, and he said, death to the rebels. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We uh, upset the colonel, Jim. So so now are we... So now the plan... We just, the plan is now to go raise the... the Bring down the lighthouse. Yeah. Lighthouse Turn to the ground. <laughs> yes, we're going to burn down the lighthouse. Do we want to stick the patient first? Did we, and did, oh, we forgot to tell Blanche that was the plan. Well, we can go out about. through the kitchen, right? It's not like she's going to call the fire department. Yes, well, we should right, tell yeah. her what's going on. If only. <laughs> I don't know if we should tell her we're burning the lighthouse down. <laughs> well, um, we should tell her we're heading out before dinner. I yeah, got another right. plan, which is maybe me and Clark... Wait, Clark, you got a gun? I don't have a gun, I, but I have a sledgehammer. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> okay. That's a knife. What do you want to do with this? What are you going to do? I say you guys go burn down the lighthouse. Me and Clark hide in the underbrush by the slab in case they come back over to uh, to sacrifice somebody else. And, and I go blam, blam, and Clark goes clunk, clunk, and we kill the murderer. Wow. You know, wow. it's actually not a bad idea, Sergeant, because uh, so far we haven't been able to find this guy, so maybe we should split up in this case. It's not, oh, a, terrible, it's not okay. a terrible idea. Not a terrible idea. Now, all. Velvet, okay. you heard multiple voices it. the other so, day, though, right? Uh, say, I'm so sorry. You heard but, multiple voices last night. Hmm. Clark, your slam. sledgehammer damage, Clark, is going to be 1d8 plus 1. By so the, the ladies and I will go burn the lighthouse down, and you two are going to go and hide in the bushes. Yeah. That's, that's the plan. All right. 
Um, I only well, uh, need heard, one. Hold on, I heard multiple voices. I think I think uh, that uh, Velvet heard. I mean, definitely screaming and then some sort of chanting. So I suppose yes, it would have been. I guess that's two voices, and then they both stopped at roughly the same time. Um. So so yeah, I mean maybe maybe. Uh, Does I mean, Velvet I, uh, smoke yeah. by any chance? Does she have matches? That's an excellent question. Uh, I would imagine she would smoke. I, would uh, <clears throat> I didn't write down. Um, oh, I do. I actually did write down matches. Oh, well, there you go. I have so, matches. Okay, so not, let's there would stop. have been plenty of matches in the kitchen too. Yeah. So. And, I, and she also has a secret flask of whiskey in case that's. So let's let's stop and pick up some gasoline by the generator. Yeah. Any chance there was a wheelbarrow there or anything like that? Give me a luck roll. What's that? Luck, yeah, luck roll. roll. Yeah, probably. Luck roll for me. I'm gonna roll too. Uh, yeah, I only have one window party. tonight. Uh, and I failed. I got sixty-one. Clark, are you okay with this idea? You and me, sneak by the slab. I think uh, like seven. Yeah, you know, that's I want to catch my luck. I just okay. need to no. borrow the colonel's uh, wheelchair. Uh -huh. You wait. You said you got equal to your luck, or yeah, I believe it was equal. I think I have. Well, yours is a success, so yeah, you can have a wheelbarrow. Okay. All right. So let's hold the wheelbarrow up with some gasoline. Should someone else with? Hey, Clark, should you take one of the guns as well? I mean, a sledgehammer is good for one person. I was I was hoping that just in case something shows up by us, we have at least one weapon. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. Velvet's, Velvet's got a gun now. Um, <clears throat> okay, Velvet's then. got a gun from the ornithologist tent, and she's got twenty five rounds of ammo. I don't I don't know um, how much. Uh, does anyone else in in the sort of smaller party, Mumsy or or Byron, have any training with handguns? I do not believe I have any training. I know how to kill someone with a pencil, but I don't know about guns. That's outstanding. I know. Um, my dad taught me when I was a little girl out in the prairie. Wow. Uh, no, I, I do have a pistol, but uh, my firearms is no. I have nothing yeah, and, better than the than what's listed. Velvet knows how to shoot a rifle or a shotgun, but not. Not a, a pistol, unfortunately. She's not. It's an special. automatic, so it's a forty-five automatic. By the way, just so if you're taking it, these are the stats. So D10. go ahead and write it one down. One D ten. You have. You told me. So why don't why don't I? Well, this it? one is one D ten plus two. A forty-five is one D ten plus two. Fifteen yards is the basic range. Well, this and is so exciting. Malfunctions on a 100. 1D10. So why, why don't I, well, so Colark, why, since you're going to go, uh, why don't you take the gun? Okay, yeah, I'll take the gun. Velvet, you... Velvet, ha Velvet has a pistol of some sort, right? So we have at least one weapon. Okay. And we're going to have we're gonna have some fire. <laughs> so do you want the sledgehammer just in case? Uh, Sure, we'll throw that in the wheelbarrow too. Okay. I would still like to warn um, Blanche before we go that that we're gonna go take another look for 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 Charles. I just don't want to disappear. She knows there's a murder around. I don't want us to disappear without telling her. Okay, she says. Well, um, I guess if last night was any indication, I won't expect you back for dinner, but I'll try and keep something on the stove warm for you. Perfect, Very Blanche. Good. You think of everything. Thank you. We don't tell her the details, but she knows we're going off. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, two of you are heading to the rock. Can you? <laughs> and so that, in fact, uh, means that you're going to be heading in separate directions <laughs> oh, um, oh. around because okay. the, the rock is approached from the road. Uh, again, this is. As far as you can tell, this is a ring road that basically does a circle around the island. Mm -hmm. And so the team going to um, burn the lighthouse is heading north, and the team going to um, guard the rock is going east and then eventually north. But So just before we all leave, uh, the plan for the team <laughs> that's going to burn the lighthouse, mm -hmm. I think we're going we're gonna to take the, take the road north from the house. 
Okay. Uh, to basically where we were earlier today and then go slightly west and then set fire to the <laughs> lighthouse and then basically run? Like, we're going to, what's yeah. the plan? We're going to well, run We're going to definitely move back quite a bit from it, sure. Are we going to, are we going to, um, are we going to hide in the woods? Or are we going to immediately book it down the road toward the rock? Uh, toward the rock? Uh, <laughs> no, if you move towards the rock, then people uh, then people won't go to the rock. Are, are we going to head straight back to the house then? Down the, I, think, I think we head towards the house. Yeah, that sounds good. So we, so we walk we're, we're straight back south towards the house. And Clark yeah, and I are going to hide. Running, and then, and we then go, do we and wait? Then we can start walking back, yes. And, and the, is the plan that we wait until we, if we hear anything and we just hang out I, in the back? I think so. All right. Should we have some kind of a distress signal so the two groups can signal each other? Like? Like? Well, like somebody's on fire. <laughs> yeah, I was going to no, say, no, if there's no, a gunshot, then we know that something's up. So <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's a small enough island that I assume gunshots would be... Are there any signal flares? No. How no, do you have enough not... bullets to say like two means we're okay, three come get us, um, or two come and get us? I think I think if they hear a gunshot, they're gonna know something's wrong. I think and if there's nothing yeah. going on there, then you guys find us and okay. vice versa. Yeah, right? Velvet's got the um, Velvet's got uh, 25 rounds of ammo. So I mean, in theory, yeah, we could. In the gun. Oh, so yeah, she's she's got a pretty reasonable amount of ammo. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we could do something like that, like two shots, not super fast. Well, what happens if I have two targets and I shoot? Yeah, I don't. Never mind. Never mind. Like, I, I think just the fact that the there shooting go. going on is gonna be is gonna be indication enough. There you go. Yeah. Fair so we'll enough. just say don't use your gun unless um there's something to shoot at. Well, you're gonna light the lighthouse on fire so we can do smoke signals. <laughs> Yeah, they, true. that's really true. That's a good point. Aren't smoke signals created when you throw a blanket over Yeah, you have to have a wet blanket or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I didn't, I didn't get that merit then. So let's, let's do this. Let's just do this. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'll say that, so you left about 530 after all the prep preparations and talking to Blanche and everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, so the team, um, I mean, it's going to take each of you about an hour to get into position because of the fact that, um, the team going north to the lighthouse has a bunch of stuff to drag. And then the team going to the rock is sort of going the long way around the road to the opposite side of the island. So, um, it's about 6.30. It's getting to be, yeah, basically dusk, sunset. Um, and each of you arrives at your, um, respective goals without any, um, incident. So I guess, um, since Jimmy and Clark's plan is just to kind of wait, um, are you guys going to conceal yourselves or yes. you're sort of sitting on the rock? Okay. So, um, the tree line is fairly far. Let me just... Is there like, grass or rocks or anything? No, I mean the thing is that the 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 rock, the slab, is so close to the cliff, and because it's you know essentially flat in a cliff and it's sea air and a small island, it's just scrub. So like mm. the only the only reasonable way to conceal yourself, I mean you could also try to conceal yourself behind the rock. No, Maybe, I don't think so. Clark, um, what do you think? So, you think that's too close? Because then we. The only advantage of that, Clark, that I see, unless you have a different idea, is that if they start to approach with someone they're going to sacrifice, then we pop up behind the rock and shoot them or tell them to stop or yeah. hide in the woods a little bit further away. What do you think? Yeah, well, I defer your, your judgment, Sergeant, but I, I prefer that we hide in the, in the woods. But how far? Have... Okay, so the, I like the woods, too. How far are the woods? Are they 100 yards? or? Yeah, about 100 yards away. I mean, so it's going to be out of range of your handguns. And we also might miss seeing something. What about let, lying down? Oh, I know. What about if we find a spot close to the cliff, but like 50 feet away from the slab of rock and we lie down, you know, in the middle of the night, they, they, they may not see us. And I've got, I've got a 60 in stealth. Yeah. All right. Why don't you roll stealth and, um, 
both of you roll stealth if that's your plan. Okay. You, well, hold on a second. I don't, I don't know if that's the plan. Clark, what do you think? Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm probably not as stealthy as you, but, no, but yeah, we can give it a try. But instead of being instead of being 300 feet away hiding in the woods, I think 50 feet away from the slab laying down in the scrub, we're, we've still they still could see us, but it's nighttime. Maybe they won't see us if unless they right. walk, unless they walk right by us with a torch. I figure maybe close closer to the cliff means that they won't be walking close to there, and then we can observe still maybe with whatever ambient light the slab from only fifty mm -hmm. feet away. Do you do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I agree with that. And and if if, if the guns if our weapons wouldn't be effective. From from the distance of being you know being in the woods, yeah. that's probably our best bet. Okay, so all right, both of you roll stealth. Just tell it. me what the result is, but I'm not gonna you know comment on it yet. No way. I witness. You have a witness. Another, Don't forget another one. Another one. What? That's not even. That's uh, honestly. The, the chances of that is is insane. We've rolled about it's, uh, 15 in, times. What, it's about as good a chance of me rolling a 96. I mean, uh, did you roll, did you roll a 96? 96? How, many, how many ones did you roll <laughs> tonight? That's insane. I've rolled two. I rolled right. one. I rolled one, right? And I rolled one. I so, mean, with David, it could be something with the dice, but with, um, with Bill, he's using Discord, so, you insane. know, like, there's no... Anyway, um, so what you're telling me is that um, Jimmy got an extreme success and that Bill got <laughs> basically a fumble. <laughs> and Clark too. But you're hiding together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's all I need to know. Oh, oh no! <laughs> the the stress! <laughs> we have done. So that's a Team, that, that's Team Slab. So Team Lighthouse, yeah, yeah. tell me what you're doing. Team Slab. Uh, so team I lighthouse. say <laughs> we we douse the base of the lighthouse with gasoline. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm curious. Before just before we do that, I, do we want to test the um the door again to see if it's still blocked? The trap door. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'll wait down here, fellas. Okay. <laughs> Maybe All right, is fine. I will. I will go to the top of the stairs and push on the door of the lighthouse to see if it gives. It does not. It does not give. Right. Or right, I go back down. Okay. <laughs> uh, we douse right. the base with with light of with, with gasoline. Yeah. How many cans, by the way, have you brought? I would say probably two or three. Okay. Yeah. These these are like uh, yeah, it says I'm, uh, ten gallon cans. Right. Or... I'm I'm notoriously terrible with both distances and volumes, okay. um, but it does say so. One second. Eleven. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> by each can is five gallons. Five gallons. Right. Yeah. So we'll say three or four cans would probably be what I would think would be enough. That's a lot of gasoline. And, right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I would yeah. I would douse the base. Yeah, but it's a big lighthouse. Yeah. So I douse the base with gasoline. Uh, we try. We have a forest near us, and so there's wood. There's ambient wood sort of around. Mm -hmm. So we'll. Uh, yeah, I mean the peninsula that the lighthouse is on does not have forest, but so you'd have to, you know, make a break for it. But yeah. All right. So let's do it. Ambient forest. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we. So just... and then just sort of light that. Yeah. Using the matches we have and a little gasoline to get it started. Yep. And then sort of just throw that at the lighthouse and, and stay back. <laughs> and just run. And just run back. Okay. Um, so the flame take very easily on the gasoline. And I need everyone in Team Lighthouse to give me a listen roll. A listen roll. Team Lighthouse. I don't hear it. I had I roll 80, my listen is 20. I also rolled exactly an 80. This is getting creepy now. It's really getting creepy. Uh, and I rolled an 81. Oh my God. <laughs> this is super creepy. Oh. My listen is pretty good, but I didn't hear it. I, I failed it by a lot. Okay. Um, Dude, that's so really weird. 
Mm -hmm. So tell me what you're doing. You're you're standing and watching the lighthouse. Or yeah, I want to see. I want to see if anything comes out of it. I want to see if anything if it <laughs> keeps burning. We ran you know. away first, right? Like we we're away. I'm, I'm curious yeah. to see if it, once it reaches the top, what happens there. We've stumped the keeper. Okay. No, we just rolled a three. <laughs> um, so you're standing and watching the lighthouse. Okay, so all of a sudden, um, Dr. Reynolds gets whacked from behind, um, and uh, you suffer, let's see. You suffer? Oh, I, uh, I suffer. You're going to suffer. We're going to bring Dr. Reynolds over to the slab, and right. <laughs> Clark and I are going to jump out and shoot, shoot, and roll, roll a hundred. Um, <laughs> hit Dr. Reynolds. I'm really praying for you here. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I keep having to refer, like, I'm. it's hard for me to do this with, like, someone who's not a keeper sitting right next to me because every time I look something up, then I feel obliged to close the book so Steve no, can't not, peek. Steve is verify that Steve. That velvet is never looking. Velvet is never looking. Steve. Cheater! 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 Velvet is on that. What fun would that be, though? Like, uh, you know. All right. <sighs> yeah, don't worry about Steve. Velvet's cool. Um, You get punched in the back of the head, and you yeah. take four points of damage, and you're basically like, what's your actual hit point total? So where's hit points on this thing? Oh, right. Nobody, humans. What's nobody heard anything. You didn't hear anybody walking up behind you. You all <laughs> failed your listen roll like horribly. <laughs> the points are related to what? That's the one thing that didn't trend. When I saved this thing, it didn't translate over. You guys are yeah, mesmerized by the fire. On. Is that based on constitution? Um, yes, it is. How is it based on? It is, um, I feel like it's one. Oh, no, it's double your size divided by 10. Hold on. I have mine is over here, right? Isn't Clock that one? looks like they lit the looks like they lit the lighthouse on fire. Yeah. Well, let's keep an eye out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably a, not as good a no, shot no. as you okay. are. Hit points: con plus size, and then divide the total by ten. Con plus size, so that'd be ninety-five divided by ten, so nine point five. So nine. So you round down. So you have nine. So you okay. basically took. Almost half your hit point total. Yep. Thankfully, not half because that would have been a major wound that would have been treated differently. But mm -hmm. I mean, you are sent reeling by this yes. powerful okay. punch to the back of your head. Okay. Um, and the rest of you, I mean, I guess all of you need to now tell me your dexterity because we are now in combat. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. My dexterity. Oh, I'm is so glad I gave you that gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you. Bye. Okay. Yeah, the gun didn't do the assault. Like so how much damage, yeah. uh, Byron? How much? How many hit points do you have? It was nine. You had nine, and you took a four point damage. Yeah. Yes. Um. Sorry. Okay. Doctor, you Mumps. had sixty-five. I have a sixty-five dex. And Mumsy, thirty. Oh gosh. And um. And Byron. Dexterity. Yeah. Fifty. Fifty. Okay, so Mumsy, Byron, other person, and um, and Velvet. Okay, so Velvet, uh, you are the first to be able to react. Shoot him! I'd like to look. I'd like to look <laughs> so at what's happening. You turn around. You hear Byron grunt, um, and basically feel or you know, so see out the corner of your eye that he goes reeling, mm. and you quickly turn around, and you're faced with a very large man. Um, in, uh, in, um, scrubs, uh, that are soaked with blood mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, he, right now he, um, has his fists up, mm -hmm. um, but you can see sort of close to him, he has a, a an ax basically wow. that he's dropped. Um, and, uh, yeah, he looks pretty crazed. Right. You're not Good. a professional, but yeah. Um, I'd like to run and get some distance, and then maybe try to turn and fire the pistol. Okay. Clark, um, I sure hope they don't get like attacked from behind. 
Like they might be mesmerized by the lighthouse on fire. Yeah, maybe, maybe shoot him um, in that run. Somebody could sneak oh. up behind them. So I'm assuming you were all standing fairly close together to watch the. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're going to be firing um, while running, there's a good chance you're going to hit someone you didn't mean yeah, to. Yeah. Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you hit? Why don't you shoot first then run? <laughs> uh, okay, if that's possible. Yeah, I mean you're at melee, so Do yeah. I have to draw. I mean, yeah. So is there a diff? I, I don't remember the combat system. Is there a disadvantage to having a, a gun at point? I guess point blank range. No, there's not, an right? advantage to having a gun at point blank range. But I'm going to say for this first round, because you weren't ready with it, mm -hmm. um, that you're going to lose that advantage, and so you're just going to roll a regular. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, uh, it's probably fair to say that if you're at point blank, like you can probably aim without danger of hitting your friends, but I guess let's see if you roll really poorly. It's going right. to be a d20. Oh, okay. Alright, is it a magical handgun? Do I get an advantage to the hit roll? Plus one handgun. I rolled a five. <laughs> What's your handgun skill? Um, 20, so that would be okay. an extreme mm -hmm. success. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, give me that. I need some percentile dice. He's gonna be fighting back. Remember, uh, these yep. don't match. These are both tens. Where, where's the other dice? Um, remember, in combat, when someone declares an attack on you, you can choose to either fight back, dodge, or um, do a maneuver. Um, so I am gonna have whoever this person is. Uh, attempt to fight back by grabbing your gun from you. Mm. He rolls, uh, yeah, not a success. Mm. So, um, so you get, you win that, so you're going to basically be able to do your damage. Mm. Um, so go ahead, I, I think I just told you that was 1d10 plus 1. D10 one. Plus. Clark, it'd be crazy if like Charles is walking around in his medical scrubs all bloody and everything and sneaks up behind them and... Uh, so I rolled a 7. Yeah, it's like somebody crazy. in the back of the head. Yeah, like... <laughs> hey, maybe we should tell those guys. Happening. Oh no, we just heard the gunshot actually. Any second yeah. now we're gonna hear this gunshot. Oh uh, yeah. You, would you hear, hear a 45 from a mile away? Uh, possibly, away. yeah. Depends on how the wind um, is blowing. So, um, you hit for nine? Nine damage. Oh. Good. They might not need a sergeant. <laughs> Velvet, you no, are I'm really something. Wow. Um, so he takes it right in the shoulder um, and staggers back. You've clearly hit him very hard. Mm. Um, and he um, is just barely saves himself from being knocked to the ground, but like he's badly wounded, he's bleeding copiously. Um, um, so next in the dex order is him. Mm -hmm. um, he basically turns. What do you, do you remember? I said I wanted to get a little distance between us two, or, or is that not possible? I don't know how this works. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not. It's, it's not, not like a, an attack in the movement. You're gonna do a movement in action. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you had said I'm running away while firing, then I would have allowed it. But then, like I said, you would have gotten a disadvantage uh, um, and maybe hit one of your friends. <laughs> so he's going to attack you. And then you tell me, are you dodging, fighting back, or trying to do a maneuver? Uh, I'd like to dodge. Okay, so roll. That would be a good idea. Oops. So roll, you're rolling your dodge skill. Yep. Um, I failed the dodge. Right. Um, so he also failed his attack, um, which means that um, draw defender wins. So okay. if both fail, no damage inflicted. So he basically takes a swing at you, mm -hmm. but his shoulder is so badly damaged that he misjudges the distance mm -hmm. and kind of whips, you know, when you're yeah, I, to... I like to scream. Ah! Yeah. Um, <laughs> So now Lord Byron. That was a that was like a crow scream. Uh, okay, well Lord Byron's kind of staggered right now, right? Yeah, I mean, um, but a couple of seconds have gone by, so you you could. Um, so I'll head to the wheelbarrow and grab the sledgehammer. That's probably okay. all. Right. Oh, you don't have a gun. Oh my no, God. I gave the gun to to, uh, to Clark. character. 
Um, so that's kind of all. That's I'm a gonna nice gun you got there, Clark. <laughs> so you're just going to pick up the sledgehammer and heft it and get it ready, and then um, Mumsy. Oh goodness, um, Mumsy has a pencil. <laughs> Stab with a pencil. Um. That sounds. Seriously, what would it, what what kind of decks would it take? Well, hypnotize them. Hypnotize them. No, they have to be. They have to be willing. Yeah. They oh. have to be. Psychoanalyze them while we're waiting. Psychoanalyze them. <laughs> I don't think it takes a professional to know that he intends to harm you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't need He's to have job. psychology for that. Wait. Is he still looking at Velvet? Yeah, I mean, it's only been a few seconds. Okay, so... Oh. Velvet, Velvet, well, I don't think I would be felt. I think I'd get in the way, so I'd like to maneuver away. You're just running, basically? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I see in the corner of my eye, Byron's getting that sledgehammer ready. I want to get out of his way. I, wa I don't want to go too far because I want to be able to come back to get him with the pencil, but yeah. I just want to get out of it. No, I'm serious. Why did we need to? Your point, I just let us deal with it with the gun. Yeah, what if we need to be like, hey, I'm going to get in the way and stab him with a pencil. I can, I know how to, I know where to insert the pencil, but uh, this he's kind of based and moving. Your knowledge of anatomy is is uh, mm -hmm. second to none. Damage, <laughs> damage, one d one. No, if you get it in, anyway, we're in combat. We're not discussing this. Mumsy has her pencil at the ready, backs up, but I want to get out of Byron's way. All right, and also I'm assuming Velvet's way. And out of Velvet's way also. And it, it is now Velvet's turn. So Clark and, like and, and the sergeant guess. don't hear the gunshot. Oh yeah, I guess, I guess so. Uh, Keeper. So this time, because you're ready, you yeah. have advantage, so you roll the tens die twice. Take the higher, um, lower roll. Uh, yes. Keeper. Sorry, the more, <laughs> the better roll. The better Keeper roll. Keeper Anna. Keeper Anna. Yeah. Did Clark and Clark was asking if we did we hear. Did we hear the gunshot? <laughs> Ginger's Easy blowing it. Easy as a brush. A uh, why don't both of you give me a listen roll? Uh, you rolled a 20. So what, what level of success is that? Oh, okay. I'm um, still doing it. trying to listen. It's 20. Uh, so yeah, I rolled a 27. That's fair. Uh, unfortunately, that's not a success. Um, and so uh, that, was, that was even with my advantage. Can you push your luck? No, you can't. Her? You can't push combat. Oh, no. okay. mm -mm. Um. So he uh mm -hmm. was. She's not a very good shot, apparently. Yeah, and he was trying to fight back. So his he succeeds. Um. Yes. So he's gonna actually punch you. Mm. Um. Actually, I don't need to roll in Discord. It's right here. Uh, Jimmy hears some crickets because he rolled a ninety-nine. Jiminy, okay. You take two points of damage to the face. Um, now Velvet is angry. Yes. Velvet begins to metamorphosize into uh, an elder, <laughs> elder god. Stage and screen. Okay. Um, now it is his turn, and he's going to try and take another swing at you. So oh, are you dodging, fighting back, or doing a maneuver? Uh, dodging. Okay, roll. Clark, what did you roll for listen? Oh, I rolled a four. I rolled one, one again. Are you serious? I'm serious. No, this divisional Wonder Woman. So once again, you know, he switches at you, and it looks like he's about to connect. Like freaking black yeah, flips last or something. Minute, Velvet is just it's like, like, like Neo in the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and takes no damage. Oh my god. Um, so there you have it. And now it is Byron's turn again. <laughs> You're up, Rich. Yeah, I know. Um, I have a sledgehammer. Swing that sledgehammer. <laughs> All right, let's do that. Now, uh, he is, this is a combat rule that I had actually forgotten about on our one shot. Um, which I don't think disadvantaged you. I think it disadvantaged my poor creature. But the, um, the rule is that w when you are outnumbered as this man is, then 
uh, after, mm-hmm. the first, after the first time he is targeted by an attack. So he can fight back on the first attack, but every attack after that um, is going to be at an advantage. Oh, so right. if, you're, if you're swinging with the sledgehammer, you roll the, the tens die twice, or if you're doing discord, just roll it twice. Take That's the so lower good. result. Hmm. And you're going to be rolling your fighting brawl skill. Okay, that is a... What is that? It's an eight. Hold on. Fighting Two o'clock. Brawl. I'm getting a little tired waiting here. Yeah, so fighting brawl is just going 25. Is that what that is? Yep. Yeah. Just you might have to see balls. what's going on on the other side of the island. Uh, I rolled a 38, which is terrible. Well, roll again, though, because you, oh, right. you get right. advantage. That's right. That would be an 83. <laughs> the exact inverse of the 38. That's, that's creepy. What is, this is mathematically impossible. This is just yeah. weird stuff tonight. Um, so you swing the sledgehammer, but unfortunately you're a little slow and uh, don't manage to connect with it. Um, so Muncie. Is- Would it be possible for me to run up, grab the sledgehammer, and, and do a try to hit him? Um, sure. Grab it from out of Byron's hands. I'm I'm assuming he would be willing. He's wobbly and willing, and, um... He's wobbly and willing. (laughs) He's wobbly and willing. So what do I roll? Do I roll fighting brawl? Fighting brawl, and, um... I I did it! Oh, okay, you don't even need a bit. 22! Fighting brawl, 25! I did it, David. Um, and I think I said that that sledgehammer was going to be 1d8 plus 1. <coughs> Give me that wow. sledgehammer. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> yeah. wait, 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 wait. This is an 8, right? That's an 8, yeah. I still think my... Yeah! Nine! Oh. Nine, damn oh, it! Wow. Okay. wow. Look Basically. at the keeper! The keeper is like, what? Um, what is going on? Your sledgehammer connects with the side of his head. Good! Oh. Uh, and there is a really unsettling thunk crunch sound. <laughs> Mumsy can handle um, it. Mumsy's dicked off. And, and this very large man drops to the ground. Wow. Good. Clark, you got some playing cards? Maybe we can play some gin <laughs> rummy while we're sitting Mumsy's here. Mumsy's in the grass. Uh, with the sledgehammer like goes. A light or something? <laughs> Whoa! Um, and meanwhile, behind you, the, um, the lighthouse has really taken it. Is burning um, <laughs> and then you hear a sound behind you from the lighthouse yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. like, like a burbling like gurgling sound um, and then something Let's run. something comes out of uh, the, the second floor window and it <laughs> It appears to be like a stream of large, viscous bubbles with like an oily sheen on them, but like a cluster, and it basically reaches out through the lighthouse window, which is fairly narrow, because it's only the second floor, not the top where the light was, is. Um, And yeah, basically the bubbles come out and like dribble down um, the lighthouse and sort of roll away past you, Um, but basically everything that it touches, like Wrapped and everything turns black. And the um, flames, and the flames so didn't do anything to it. What's that? Did the flames do anything to it at all, or just walk right through it? Um, oh, it didn't. Pardon me, I, I misspoke. It did not go through the flames. So when I said it went down the side of the lighthouse, actually, what it kind of did was like project itself. So it, it seemed to be like almost like spread it out. Carefully avoiding touching the flames. Okay. Um, and and it seemed to be in a big rush. Uh, so did not. Um, basically give you a glance if you could have seen it giving you a glance because it doesn't appear to have a head or eyes um it just seems to be a big mass of bubbles and the three of you in team lighthouse need to give me a sanity roll i feel Mm. so insignificant in the large picture of the universe Uh, sanity roll i can't that's a five i'm all to five (laughs) wow all right. Not um, the today. So Mumsy only takes one point of sanity. Um, Amazing. You're going to take 2d6. 2d6. Wow. Oh. That would have been incredibly I mean, this is like 
far beyond any like dead body or like I mean this is clearly and and um Clark you got a smoke Pardon Clark you got a smoke <laughs> Byron did you fail your fanny roll or succeed That's eight Okay you're going temporarily insane Uh well uh, uh, 47 minus 8 would be 30 Nine, I guess. But you've lost more than five ah, points yes, okay. in one right, go. So I'm gonna do circle thirty-nine. Uh, Velvet is going bye-bye for a little while. Yeah, Velvet is is she's mine for a little while. <laughs> uh, but I'm still waiting to hear from Byron whether he passed or failed his sanity. You're muted. Sorry, I had it on mute. I didn't realize it. Uh, I've been I've been saying it for a while. Uh, I I failed by two points. So you Push. get to roll. You get to roll. You, you can't, can't do luck for sanity. Uh -uh. Can't no, do not for sanity. combat, not for sanity. Uh, so um, go ahead and roll 2d6 for me. Okay. Oh, boy. Hold on. Mumsy might want to hide right now. Yeah, oh, right. God. She, she passed her sanity roll. Yeah, but the two, she's with two people who are so temporarily busy, insane. Like, yeah, I rolled a nine. nine. <laughs> You're also going insane uh, for a yeah, while. Yeah, uh, I would think so. <laughs> yes, yes. Finally, five weeks in. All right, give me your character sheet. Rich, send me your character sheet. Drop in. All right, hold on. Drop in. I gotta send it to you. Uh, Actually, I haven't seen this part. So this is gonna be interesting. Oh, I'm gonna have so much fun. <laughs> this makes it all I'm worth it. it this way. All that boring investigating. <laughs> being so careful. I'm glad I'm on Team Slab, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't you, Team Slab, give me a spot hidden roll, please? All right. Oh, you know what? I don't get you yet. You you still have to um, do an intelligence roll before I get you. I forgot that oh, part. Yeah. yeah. But you want to actually fail your intelligence roll. Really? Yes. Yeah. You don't you don't understand understand your intelligence role. Why would that be? What's the reason? Why Mom, see, you're I in the with two crazy people. You failed your intelligence. Yeah, ninety-five. I, I doubt that right. I failed this. So you immediately repress the memory of what you've seen. Wow. Uh, has not stopped you from. Um, but um, I think that there's still going to be a bout of madness, but you're not going to sure you're not going to come out. No, of I, I passed <laughs> my intelligence roll. I'm right, very smart. No. <laughs> so here's the irony about the sanity and the yeah. intelligence roll is that you're too smart, and your brain is not going to let you repress. Right. So ironically, because you're more intelligent. Then you're uh, more you're, likely to go insane. You yeah. are fully aware that what you have just seen is an otherworldly thing that should not yeah. exist, and so you, my friend, are having a bout yes. of madness. And when you come out of your bout of madness, you are going to be temporarily insane. So, how insanity yeah. works the bout of madness, I get to dictate you. Once the bout of madness is over, you get control back of your characters. You're going to be fine after the bout of madness-ish. I mean, you know. Um, you're going to be temporarily insane, Byron, and so we can discuss what that means for you, but you're, okay. going, to get, you're going to get control of your character back, but then you get to roleplay being insane. Oh, okay. That, that sounds like fun. Um, with the train of psychoanalysis. Just trying to stay yeah. next to you. Hold on. Oh, Are it's you sending me your... Yeah, I am. I'm working on it. My All right. Is, in the meantime, you and Clark, anything happened to you and Clark yet? Oh, uh, yeah, we played some cards. <laughs> We're bored. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you could play cards because it's kind of windy down there. I told Clark about my uh, first wife. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, I'm having a hard time sending this. You got crazy here. You got yeah. windy. Oh, she's just saying it's it's windy here. Yeah, That's why we didn't hear the gunshot. So she's been blowing in my face all day. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop that. Okay. Okay. Feel cool and when, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I misspelled character. Um, there you go, Clark. I made okay. or Bill. I made my spot hidden roll. When, when oh, the, cool. when for some the, reason, when the some of the fill-ins get deleted. I've turned it over. I failed. Uh, 
All I'm looking at, actually, what I'm interested wait, in you, is your character traits. Yeah, go wait, for it. Yep. So wait, yeah, that, that's, all, that's all there. Traits. I'm sorry, you said you emailed it to me? Yes. Oh, here, yep, I got it. I can't edit, for some reason I can't edit it on this computer. Uh, that's funny, it's just showing me a message, please wait. If this message is not replaced by the contents of the document. What does that mean? Uh, I, it, it seems to me like an error message, hold on. Um, it Hello, might be. There's no way to send sheets through Discord, right? I can take a picture of it. I can just send you a picture of it. Thank you. Take a picture of it. And just send drop and drag it. Now that Steve is back, um, okay. I'm I'm going to announce um, the result of his bout of madness, or, or at least how it's going to affect his character. Oh, yeah, I got the same. What the heck happened now? Uh, I um, the same so error when I. Velvet Labouche had a meaningful location um, of her Rockport family home hmm. in the nearby forest hunting grounds. She used to feel at peace there. Now she can't get out of her head. That's what Steve had originally put. Um, so I am amending that um, significant backstory piece. So that meaningful location now um, now says to her something sinister lurks in the darkness. You just want you just want the skills, right? That's what you want to picture. Yeah. So this backstory yeah. page. And the backstory. The backstory is that much. Traits. Something sinister lurks in the darkness at the, the rock court. Well, no, I, I generally in, in like the forest. So any, any so, forest, because she's yeah. afraid of the forest. Now. Well, I'm not giving you a phobia, um, because I would have put that there. But basically, that's now going to be part of your character's like char character. Mm -hmm. Something sinister. So, so you, always, you always choose, nervous about. about well, you can choose whether that means that you're nervous or, or whether you're going to go in there with your guns blazing because mm -hmm. you're a hunter or whatever. But that's that's the change that I made to your character sheet. Um, so Byron's working on getting that to me. Sorry. So the, that's okay. In the meantime, I'm going to tell Mumsy, because um, you were not as affected by this. Um, you see, the first thing you see after you watch this um, horrifying being, by the way, it uh, as I said, it, it avoids the flames, but sort of propels itself out of the lighthouse, and then it rushes past you, um, and it goes into the forest. And, and it is a single creature. It's not like somehow still connected to the lighthouse. It's gone now. No, I mean, eventually, it, I mean, it, it kind of moves like a slug almost where it extends itself mm -hmm. and then shortens itself again. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you can't really make out any sort of like head or eyes. Or it's just, it looks like a viscous, oily, somewhat translucent. Um, is it big? Like did it, did it like stand? It's what? Huge. Yeah, like it's huge. five foot high or like fifteen oh, feet. Oh no, high? no, like it was big enough basically to drop itself out of the lighthouse without touching the wall. Like the size to of, stretch like down. The size of an elephant, the size of a whale. Um, size is not a great. I mean, it, not the size of a whale, but like, and it stretches out and then goes back together. So mm -hmm. it's it's the glimpse that you got. You can't really okay, okay. Um, okay. tell what the mass is, but I mean, it it is. It's big. Yeah. It it got itself out of the lighthouse. Um, Much bigger than a human. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, Clark, we might lose like a point of sanity out of boredom sitting in its grass. <laughs> no, wait. Did I ask you to roll me a spot hidden? Did you fail that too? Are I got you? it. Clark failed. That okay. Failed. So, uh, Jimmy, you can see the beginnings of what looks like because it's now dark. Um, you can see sort of a flickering um, light in the direction of the lighthouse. Uh, it looks like it could be a flame. As the lighthouse basically catches fire, you can spot it across okay. the, the island. Um, hey, hey, look over there, Clark. I, it's like it's. A, I think the lighthouse is on fire. Mumsy, <laughs> Mumsy <laughs> is recovering from her, you know, initial shock of being like, "Holy crap, what was that?" Yeah. Um, and then essentially hears um, screaming, and she turns to Velvet's direction and sees that Velvet is screaming and basically running towards uh, the tree line at what appears to be after the creature and she's just like wildly firing off shots out of her gun. 
and she had five left. She fired two, so she's just boom, 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 click, 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 and just running. What are you gonna What are you gonna do if anything? Um, I don't know how she's running. She's sprinting, hell for leather, after this creature. Velvet, velvet, dear, come back, come, be calm. Let me psycho use my psychoanalysis skills to help you. Psychoanalysis um, is for whips. <laughs> I'm killing this thing. <laughs> click, 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 click. Velvet, come back. We need you here. I don't know what to do. I'm slow. Um, do you have psychoanalysis is not going to work on someone running away from you? Yeah. But do, you, yeah. do you have like a charm or persuade or anything like that you could use? To... I could try to persuade her. Okay. See if you get through. I do. 40? My persuade well, is 58 and I've rolled a 40. So I on, hope I do. It's going to be an opposed roll though. So I got to roll for her. What's your path? That's right, Mumsy. Velvet, dear. Yeah. I don't know she, what is going on, but we need to be together. Come back. She also succeeds. Um, and you had a regular success, right? Right, right. So she had a regular success. You can't direct me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me what um, to do. So so um, Velvet kind of stops at your voice, and she turns a little bit, you know, to look behind. You're behind her because she had started running off, you know, right. at a, a, and so she appears to sort of acknowledge you, but then turns back and and she she's still jogging um, towards the tree line. Well, Mumsy will not follow. I will not catch up, and I have another colleague, another person to worry about. Yeah, let's figure out what's happening to your um, colleague. So, have I gotten an updated sheet, or have you um, emailed me something? Oh yeah, here we go. And I know you're well aware, but we'll have to end soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's oh just deal God. with this bout of madness. Okay. Oh, you don't have anything written in there. Darn. Okay. No, that's a lot. I don't have much. Why that's that's, yeah, what that's, that that's night. right. Because you lost it. The rock. Um, I just have I just have the brooch that he stares at because of the 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 uh, uh, Clark. It's windy out here. Yeah, past so. life stuff going mm. on. You think we should go? I, I didn't see anything. You think we should head toward the lighthouse? Uh, Rich, tell me again, like the brief story of that brooch. Right. So that so that he was he was having um, uh, flashbacks when he had a near death experience to a, a woman that uh, was like his the love of his life, uh, and then a few a few weeks ago he received the she would always wear a brooch, mm. and then a few weeks ago he received that brooch in the mail. Mm. So he just kind of stares at it. Okay. Um, and that woman was your significant person? Supposedly that was like his wife or his girlfriend or something. He doesn't really okay. remember. Okay. But it was somebody from a past life. It wasn't this one. Her past life, right. Oh, and That's it why he's interested you in, in the mail. Thing. How fascinating, okay. Byron. I wish um, it was the same. You believe that that woman... From your past life is here on this island now okay um and what you're gonna do is let, let me think about that um it's in the woods she's in the woods <laughs> follow the burnt bath the name was bubbles <laughs> the woman has bubbles she's taking a bubble bath <laughs> it's velvet and byron will rescue her <laughs> you are gonna um basically grab the brooch out from whatever pocket you keep it in yeah and you're gonna drop to the ground and sort of like curl up around this brooch. Yep. You're gonna basically just start weeping uncontrollably, and that's what Mumsy okay. sees. That's what Mumsy sees Byron doing. Okay, so um, Byron, Byron dear, Byron, this is a very bad situation, but I have <laughs> great confidence. <laughs> great confidence in your skill and do you know all those times I sniffed at your discussions of the occult you were right you have a lot of wisdom to share on this my friend mm -hmm. Why? And, and whatever you are weeping over we can do this together does it work does it have any you why don't you give me a psychoanalysis role what is that 16 that is a hard success. That is an extreme success. 
Well done. I'm, I'm extremely successful. Okay. We're good We're, we are good colleagues. Psychoanalysis is 91. I've owed, rolled a 16. All right. Wow. So you actually, I'm going to say that you can pull Byron out of his bout of madness. Um, you come to your senses in the forest, <laughs> and you don't remember anything about uh, anything that's happened since seeing the creature. So you remember seeing the creature, um, but you have no idea how you got into the forest. Um, and Byron, you sort of come to your senses, but... I'm sorry, the, the intelligence... Didn't you say it got suppressed because I failed my intelligence? You came out of your bout of madness not insane. So you are you are now, aside from having your um, personality sheet a little bit altered, yeah. you don't have to role play any special okay. insanity. Byron, well, I just find myself and look around and, and, and maybe I'll, I'll uh, run, kind of try to get out of the forest and go back towards the burning house. Okay, so um, you can come out. You, I mean, because the burning lighthouse is now like fully on fire. It's like, I'm fairly, assuming it's fairly obvious where yeah, that so, is. Right? So, um, Mumsy, you see um, Velvet coming out of the forest, okay. looking a little, um, you know, ragged and confused. Yeah. And so I, I run over to greet you, Velvet. And okay. Um, and bring you back to where Byron is, so the three of us are together. Thank you. So, and uh, I think Velvet's sleeping. Oh, no wonder. Um, I'm sorry. I did study up on the sanity thing, and now course, there's so many like little rules, and I'm probably getting most of them wrong. But I'm just doing it the way that's going to be fun. So, <laughs> Blanche will be giving uh, us medication by the end. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. All right. So. Rich, we figure this part out together. So you have um, now decided that your loved one from a past life is on this island. I'm going to give you free reign to roll. You're coming out of your bout of yes. madness. I but got you, you are insane, temporarily <laughs> insane. Yes. Okay. Um, and so you are going to have that be part of... Um, would you like to have a... I think it would be fun to give you a mania... <laughs> Okay. Uh, as opposed to a phobia. Um, so would you like to suggest a mania based on this okay. new backstory, or would you like me to roll the mania table? What's on the mania table? Give me a couple of things that are on there. Um, What's some choices? For example, um, obsession with being in vehicles, or pathological <laughs> desire for light, compulsion for wandering, abnormal desire for cold and or cold things, I mean, there's like all kind. There's it's a 100 mm. item table. I'm gonna roll it. Mm. 100. What I can also do is roll, and if we don't think it's fun or useful, we yeah, I okay. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can find it. Um, um, is this manual. Right. It's um. Page 161. Table X sample manias. Hello, I found it. <laughs> Insanity tables. Crazy, literally. <laughs> Do you hear anything? And now I just have to remind myself of the difference between temporary, indefinite, and permanent. So temporary insanity is what you're going to have because it was a result of you losing five or more sanity points as, as the result of a roll. Also, I should ask, did you lose one-fifth of your total sanity? In no, it wasn't that much. Okay. Because that would be indefinite insanity. No. Yeah. What, it's from the start of the day? <laughs> Just game oh, how about this one? Okay. Character babbles in incoherent rapid speech. Or a turn of coherent speech. I like this one. Okay. Add it to your mania on your character sheet. Okay. Right. No, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good news is we got the murderer. Or yeah, well, the, yeah, everything's solved now, right? We got the minion. We you took care of the minion. Point Probably a minion, right? We took down a minion. What do they call him? Well, forty-seven 
Oh. Divided by like, five is nine. Cultist. You started cultist. the day with 47. 47, so if I do... I just have this vision of Muncie so grabbing the... the <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the 66 year old woman, <laughs> give me that! <laughs> Oh, that was Doc Byron's hands. Um, it is 11.30. Rich, do you have sort of an understanding of your character's insanity for now? Yeah. Uh, so he gra- Yeah, so I'll just end on this. So he, he just kind of grabs hold of Mumsy's shoulders and says, she keeps calling me Dexter. Dexter! Is that Was that my name? Was it Dexter? I don't I know. Sure I don't know. It was, dear. Who is calling you? And, and, uh, Let's head, maybe, why don't we head back to the house and discuss this further? <laughs> I, I think so. I think we should get back to the house and go to sleep and lock ourselves in the uh, in the bedrooms as quickly as possible. <laughs> Just some quick housekeeping, because I know we want to wrap up. Um, are, what are you doing, if anything, with the collapsed um, orderly? Um, and he- what are you doing, if anything, with the gear, the wheelbarrow, and the sledgehammer? Are you bringing that back? Are you bringing the empty cans back? Yeah. I'm not doing anything. I, <laughs> I, I am going to, well, I don't know if I'm strong enough. I would like to bring the sledgehammer back. I'm going to give, um, just in case, I'm giving Charles the coup de grace with the pencil. So you're going to make sure he's dead? Absolutely. Okay. All right, uh, so which, he is dead. Which way did that bubble thing go? Do we know? Into oh, the forest. forest. So Into you forest. can see a sort of very faint. Suki, get down. You can um, <laughs> see a faint trail of um, like burned foliage, mm. but it sort of you know leads off into the the depths of the forest. Um, and uh, just so you know, Byron. Um, you've come out of your bout of mania so you can function so you're not like a complete sort of you know unhinged like mind broken so you i mean again you can choose how to play your insanity whatever is fun um based on the like couple of cues that one that i gave you and one that you gave yourself but you can also function like as your normal self so you can understand things and you know okay speak to your friends and whatever. And so you can bring up your insanity whenever you think it's going to be fun to do that. Okay. Now is the cre- the, the trail, is it, is it headed generally toward the lock then? Or we can't um, tell? It's, it's too hard to tell. It also keep in mind it's dark. Yeah, now. that's right. Yeah. I, um, yeah I, I feel like we should maybe search the body, but I'm not sure if I even have the mental strength to do it. Amongst you, maybe we could just ask you to do it quick, and then let's just get out of here. Okay. I'll do a quick search of the body in the dark by the glow of the lighthouse. All right. And we do Um, have a torch. I'm sure we brought the torch. I mean, mean, I'm not even going to make you roll a spot hidden because there's just nothing. I mean, he's wearing, like, tattered, stained, dirty scrubs, and there's not much more to him. Like, there was that axe that he sort of had with him, but inexplicably didn't use against you um and um the axe also like the the um blade of it is has dried blood on it i will um, take the axe i don't i, okay. I can carry that the sledgehammer well, you have a wheelbarrow don't forget you have a wheelbarrow i want to put whatever the potential weapons are i want to get them away yeah, it's a lot lighter now that look like gasoline yeah right yeah, right oh okay um, so, so i'm gonna try to i mean i don't know how byron and Velvet are feeling if they're up to it, but oh, well, I just, I just want well, to get. I don't want to leave. You also took some damage, so you're not feeling too great. Yeah. yeah. Do you need to be yeah. in the wheelbarrow? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, uh, Velvet got punched in the face. Uh, you know, she's she's all right. Uh, Byron, I think you you're actually pretty injured. Yeah, I got I got smacked in the back of the head. So. so. I might need. To, I, I Mumpsy doesn't want to leave weapons where someone else could take them. But if I if we need to put Byron in the wheelbarrow to get you back to the house, we'll do that. I think Byron can walk, but he's just he's yeah. going to be a little out of it. Well, uh, let's let's end there. You're clearly heading back. Uh, yeah. Jimmy and Clark can figure out. I mean, basically, you've been waiting and and you haven't seen anything interesting except that you see the you know fire on in the lighthouse is getting yeah. very very strong and very visible. 
Um, and so it seems clear that it is burning, you know, pretty, uh, pretty well. Yeah. Um, and I guess we decided you couldn't hear the, the gunshots. Um, so, you know, if you're just going to head back to the house, then maybe we just pick up again next time at the house. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. now breezy, right. breezy night over here. All right, so I'm going to do a closing then. We're ready? Yeah. Thank you, Anna, so much. Thank you, everybody, for playing tonight. Really appreciate everybody uh, checking us out on uh, Twitch or YouTube later on if you watched our watch following our Call of Cthulhu campaign with our keeper, Anna. So give yourself 100 experience points. And until we see you again across the internet, keep your dice dry. We need those to make those sanity checks. Keep your, uh, uh, what? Keep your pencils ready. <laughs> and, um, and keep your bubbles popped. Keep, there you go. Keep, keep your bubbles popped. Oh, Popped. Popped? Popped. Popped. Oh, popped. Oh, yeah. Keep your bubbles popped. Whoa. Stay away from lighthouses. Yeah. <laughs> Stay, Stay away from lighthouses. Have a great night. Thanks so much, everybody. Good night. Good night.